So, Joe, you also made some moves ahead of that CPI report. We're going to get to those a little bit later, but I just want to talk to you about what we saw yesterday. Had our data team pull some stats. The S&P lost $1.5 trillion in market cap in yesterday's sell-off. Where are you at today after that big sell-off? So, I think at the top of the show, when you asked the question uh, whether we believe that it's a time to buy stocks or you take out the low, I don't think, Frank, the answer to that is any different now, <clears throat> today, than it was at the beginning of the quarter. I don't think there's any difference. I think without question, the near term is perilous for the market. Scott Minard spoke about that on overtime with Scott Wapner. He spoke about the potential for there to be a potential 20% lower in the near term. If you are a long-term investor, there is enough evidence within the economy and the market to suggest this isn't 1973, this isn't 2000, this isn't 2007. We're not at the beginning of a multi-year bear market. So if you're a long-term investor, that 20% down is really not going to matter to you. If you're more of a trader, if you're more oriented uh, where your time frame is in the short term, Jimmy's right. The market is in a perilous position right now. If you take out the intraday low from last week at 38.86, that's where the algos will engage and create a lot of selling pressure. And I think the last point on yesterday that's really important, Frank, it wasn't a retail event. There wasn't panic selling. All it was was a recalibration of, of the hope and the expectation that inflation would come out better and all the systematic, non-discretionary, rules-based algo funds that had been buying the market ahead of the inflation report, they quickly had to neutralize those positions and it led to a precipitous downfall in the market. And then, oh, by the way, at the end of the day, you have all these leveraged ETFs that are hedging in the option market and have to commit at the end of the day and exacerbates the move down. But it wasn't a panic selling retail event. And I think that's important for people to understand. Everything going on right now in the market has to do with short term derivative trading. All right. Some, some definitely some things to talk about. Speaking of people talking to Scott Wapner's at Future Proof yesterday, spoke to Jeffrey Gunlock. He said he's becoming more bearish, actually forecasting that the S&P could fall down to 3000, uh, about a 20 uh, percent decline. Kerry, where are you at? Are you feeling more bearish or do you feel like this is the bottom and we're going to bounce up from here? Well, Frank, it's hard to imagine that Jeff Gunlock can be more bearish. I thought he was already extremely bearish. <laughs> but um, on on to where we've been, we've been saying for a while that the market is stuck in a trading range. It's between the June lows and the August highs. And that's where we still are. And as Joe pointed out, there were a lot of programs that kicked into gear yesterday and started selling and it picked up the pace, drove the market down. It's hard to imagine what would have been the case if we were at 8.4 or 8.5. I mean, it's what would have happened if it was 7.9. These are numbers that are all bunched close together. And it was an interesting response. Does it change what we thought was 75 basis points for the Fed move? No, we still think it's 75 basis points. But the market is so queasy and so sensitive right now that anything that diverges from what they're hoping and expecting and safety in that case becomes just fodder for collapse and decimation. Uh, we had been buying some stocks and selling some stocks over the past month. Names that had performed well, even ones that you know, we like, Goldman likes, uh, O'Reilly, for example. We had taken some profits because they had been strong names and uh, put applied that money into some stocks that we thought were much more attractively priced today. Of course, that didn't help yesterday. Everything went down. And we think that we have to get through a few more months of seeing what the Fed does and where inflation goes. And if earnings hold up, as Jimmy said, we're going to find that out. And that's why we're trading in this range and we're just sort of treading water, hoping to keep our head above water.